Good morning. Sometimes out here on the trail, things uh, we need a little extra sleepy time. You caught me in the middle of a little afternoon siesta. That must be morning, I think. But, uh, you know, I'm not really awake yet, so I'm going to need a little uh, a little time to, to get ready and get uh, woked it up. So uh, why don't we uh, wake up with that little uh, headed out west jam? Yes, yes, let's go ahead and play that song and get our blood flowing, and then I'll be up and ready to go in a little bit. I'll see y'all after the song. Hey there, how do you do? We're headed out west, but we're waiting on you. Kick up your boots and join the fun. Just follow along, watch how it's done. We're headed out west and we're all in this together. Get it up, partner, it's time to go. We're headed out west like birds of a feather. Come on, get up, it's time to go. Go and howdy high, saddle up, it's time to ride. Get on your feet, lickety split, stomp your boots and just don't quit. We're headed out west and we're all in this together. Get it up, partner, it's time to go. We're headed out west like birds of a feather. Come on, get up, it's time to go. Spin your lasso round and round. Come on, partner, let's get down. Nowhere else we'd rather be. Come on and holler, repeat after me. Yee-haw! 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 Partner, it's time to go. We're headed out west like birds of a feather. Come on, get up, it's time to go. We're headed out west and we're all in this together. Get it up, partner, it's time to go. We're headed out west like birds of a feather. I'm plum tuckered out. That was a killer workout today. Now, as you know, we have been looking through the book of Exodus, and we are going to continue on in there today, Exodus chapter 4 through 13. And so uh, what today's topic is, is we're going to talk about the plagues um, and how, how, you know, Moses um, went to Pharaoh and he told him, let my people go. And he keeps saying that over and over and over. And Pharaoh says, no, 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 no. And then God does some really crazy things to those Egyptians to let them know, look, you got to let those Israelites go. So that's the whole story that we're going to look at today. Now, God never leaves us. That's what we have to remember. And it was probably very hard for them at the time because they had been slaves for a very, very long time. And so they might have thought God wasn't there anymore. And sometimes in our lives, we think, God, where are you? Because I haven't heard you talking to me and I haven't been uh, been seeing anything. So sometimes we, we forget that God's always there. So, uh, but that's the story today. So I thought one fun activity we might like to do is we're going to play a game called Plague or No Plague. So, uh, I will name something and then you will determine if you think it's a plague or if I'm just making up crazy stuff. So here we go. First thing, is it a plague or no plague? All the water in the area is turned to blood. 
Water to blood. Does that sound like a plague? If you said it's a plague, you are correct. Very good. Very good. All right. Let's try another one. Let's try another one. Ready? People constantly laugh and cannot stop. So throwing people into fits of permanent laughter. If you said that's a plague, you are incorrect. That is one I just made up. God never made them just roll around the floor laughing. That just wasn't happening back then. So that one was not a plague. All right, all right. Let us go with another one. How about ribbit, ribbit, frogs everywhere. Tons of frogs. What do you think? Place filled with frogs? Does that sound like a plague? If you said that's a plague, you are correct. One time, they just covered everything with frogs. There was frogs everywhere. It was gross. Now, next one. We'll stick with the animal theme and go to the insect part. How about locust? Those little annoying bugs. Yes. What about locust everywhere? Kind of like the frogs. Does that sound like a plague? If you said plague, you are correct. Very good job. Very good job. All right. Our final one. Our final one. Here we go. Last thing is cast iron skillets falling from the sky. Cast iron skillets falling from the sky. Does that sound like a plague to you? No, that is not a plague. Of course not. Of course not. Now, let's see what Dusty and Dallas have been up to on the road. Must have wa 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 water. We gotta keep moving. We're so close to Whistle Creek. Come on. Oh, fiddlesticks. It's happening again. I see a big round GCR. It's just sitting on the ground right up there. Oh, well, my tarnation, did you have to go and say that? Now I see it too. It's mine. It's all mine. I mean, I, I, thought, I thought the same thing you used to talk about. I didn't know mirages could be seen by two people. Had, which, that's, it's mine. I said it's mine. It's mine. Man, how do you think it got here on the desert trail anyway? Uh, I don't know. I mean, of... I saw it first. That's the fair thing. No, 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 no. Who knows? Split maybe... it in half, okay? Well, we'll probably do that. Who knows? Maybe some traveling ranger dropped it. And maybe some folks who, like us was going out west in search of a better life. Too bad they couldn't have dropped another. Yeah, that is too bad. Dallas, I'm seeing more mirages. No, we did it. We finally made it to Whistle Creek. Well, there's got to be, there's got to be some water. We made it to Whistle Creek. I know it's somewhere around here so we can fill up these canteens. Start looking around. Got to be water somewhere. Water. Dusty, look. What? It's a monkey with a cowboy hat over there with that traveling circus. Have you ever seen such a thing? Monkey with a cowboy hat. Hey, little monkey. Uh, I don't see anything. Hey, little monkey. Now, now I say you're a spirit and a real mirage. <laughs> Ain't no monkey over there. I've never seen a live, real circus before. Can we go to the show, please? Please. Oh, we'll, 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 we'll see. Hold on now. Here, here you go. Take a drink of this right here. Take a drink. Take your drink.
Oh, is it just me or, or is this the most refreshing water you've ever had in your entire life? It's real good. So how are you feeling? I, I feel great. Never better. So do you still see the traveling circus up ahead? No, it disappeared. But it looked so real there for a while. Enough of that, though. Can you believe we actually made it out here? I'll be honest with you, I never thought we had such a wild night out on the range. I've never had one that bad. That's crazy. This is a crazy night. Man, I still can't believe those sneaky little prairie dogs got away with all our biscuits. Oh. I mean, I slept with one eye open the whole night long. So how long do you think we should stay here well, in Whistle Creek? I mean, well, we can't stay here too long, but we'll be out of the, we'll be out of the rain, out on the range for several days when we leave here. So we got to get some more supplies for sure, and of course, stock up on plenty of water this time. Yes, sir. Man, I can't wait to wash up, meet a good night's dinner. I wonder where the nearest saloon might be. Should be summer's close. How about we split up for a while? and do some town exploring. You find a good hotel for us to stay in, and I'll run to the general store and stock up on some things that we need. That's a good idea. I'll see you in a jiffy. All right. Howdy. I found us a great place to stay for tonight and I met the nicest folks. Well, you guys see this right here. I was in the general store and I found this newspaper and it's... I don't really care about the news around here. <laughs> I mean, I don't really care about Well, it. do you care that our pictures are on the front page of Whistle Creek Times? What? Well, hot diggity dog, there we are. And that's a good picture, too, I tell you. I mean, is that us at last year's rodeo? I think what's important right now. You're right. So how do we make it into the paper of Whistle Creek? I mean, how do these folks even know who we are? Well, because news is spreading about the, all the mayhem going on in Rowdy Town. This article says that the folks back home are being forced to work on the railroad for Morgan Steamers is building so they can get water. He's making them work just to get water. We were uh, right. Mayor Rowdy did steal all the town's water as a way of forcing all the people to work on that railroad. I reckon we barely got out of there in time. According to this eyewitness testimony, he and a bunch of the deputies from the sheriff's department got swarmed with a bunch of horse flies when they were, when they were chasing out two townspeople, recently named sheriff, Dallas Lawson yep. and his friend Dusty Cooper who were trying to escape and that's why they printed our pictures. We're famous for getting out of town in time. Well, I'll be. We should be thanking our lucky stars for those horse flies, huh? I know, I know. What are the chances that happened at the exact moment those deputies were chasing us out of town? And I don't think it had anything to do with luck. I'm pretty sure it's just another example of God looking out for us. You're right, Dusty. I mean, and now that you mentioned it, he, he was probably taking care of us last night, too. Yes, sir. I mean, we really dodged a bullet getting out of Rowdy Town in time. I mean, does the article say anything else? Nothing too important. Just uh, that Rue Rowdy has been named interim sheriff and for the time being. Wait, what? Rue Rowdy's been given my badge? Of course, Mayor Rowdy will put his own son in charge of policing the people. It's the best way for him to control everybody. Oh, man. But still, it's just so hard to hear that Rue, who doesn't care about anybody but himself, is the one responsible for keeping the peace and protecting the people. Right. Boy. I bet his brother Buck wasn't too happy about that decision. I wonder how Mayor Rowdy decided which is one of his sons to put in charge. Ooh, Buck and Rue Rowdy always seemed to like, like they was up to no good, but especially that Buck. But we can't worry about none of that right now. Badge or no badge, you're the rightful sheriff of Rowdy Town. 
which is exactly why you're the one headed out to Tumbleweed Canyon to find a way for all those people. Well, howdy there, folks. Wait a minute. Y'all are Dallas Lawson and Dusty Cooper, aren't ya? You two escaping from Rowdy Town is all this town's a talking about. Oh my, I seem to have forgotten my manners. I'm Miss Charlotte Eau Claire, one of the journalists for the Whistle Creek Times. I'm covering all the shenanigans happening back in your town, and I'm just so glad you two were able to get away from that scoundrel of a mayor in time. The whole thing reminds me of one of my favorite stories from the Bible about a man named Moses. You two just have to hear it. God's people, the Israelites, were living in Egypt as slaves. Sun up to sundown, the mean old Pharaoh put them to work each and every day. Even though they were downright miserable, God never left them. He knew they needed help and sent Moses and Aaron to lead them to the promised land. Moses and Aaron listened to God and went to Pharaoh to tell him that it was time to let God's people go. Pharaoh didn't care. He liked having slaves around doing all the work for him. So he refused to hear what they had to say. Moses didn't know what to do, so he prayed and asked for help. God reminded Moses that he would never leave him and that he would save his people. God told Moses and Aaron to go talk to Pharaoh again. So that's exactly what they did. They said, let God's people go. But Pharaoh's answer was still the same, a big N-O. God told Moses and Aaron that Pharaoh would ask them to perform a miracle. So Aaron took his walking stick threw it down on the ground, and it turned into a mean old snake. That didn't bother Pharaoh none. He still refused to obey God's command to let his people go. It was time for some drastic measures. Moses then met Pharaoh at the Nile River and asked him one more time to let God's people go. But wouldn't you know it, he still didn't listen. So God told Moses that Aaron should use the walking stick to strike the river. And when he did, it turned right into blood. You'd think that would be enough to convince Pharaoh, but no siree. That Pharaoh stayed stubborn and refused to let God's people go. God had Moses try to convince Pharaoh nine more times. To prove that he was for his people, God brought punishment on Pharaoh and the Egyptians, and boy, they sure did suffer. Picture this. God sent thousands of frogs hippity-hopping all over town, the whole place smelling worse than an old boot. Then swarms of gnats and flies buzzing around everyone's head. It didn't get better from there either. I'm talking animals dying left and right, boils all over their skin, hail falling from the sky, locusts flying all around, darkness for days, and by golly, even death. Now, the whole time this was happening, the Israelites were just waiting and wondering when they would be set free. They knew that God hadn't left them and that one fine day they would see the promised land. After all this crazy mess, Pharaoh had finally had enough and he let God's people go. As they were heading out of town, God sent a cloud to lead them by day and a fire to lead them by night. God had never left them while they were in Egypt, and He would never leave them on their long journey to the Promised Land. Now that's my favorite kind of story to be reporting. You know, just like God never left the Israelites, He sure isn't going to leave us either. I wish I could stay and chat, but I'm running late for an interview for a story I'm working on. Now enjoy your stay, and don't forget to try Whistle Creek's famous frog leg stew before you head on your way. Whoa, I've never heard that part of Moses' story before. Have you? No, but that sure is crazy. I mean, it sounds like things in Egypt were buck wild with all those plagues and That's God right. said to help Moses and his people escape from Egypt. I mean, now, Miss O'Claire is right. It's kind of like what happened to us when we was trying to get out of Rowdy Town. And the horse flies swarmed all around Mayor Rowdy and them deputies that were chasing us. You know what? God really does keep proving to us over and over again that He's with us and He's never going to leave us. I mean, I know it 
took a lot of convincing to actually get me to head way out west to Tumbleweed Canyon with you, but um, I'm sure I'm glad we're doing this. Being out on the trail may not be the easy, may not always be easy, but we can always remember that God's never going to leave us. I'm sure glad Miss Eau Claire told us that story. I know we're going to need to remember it a lot over the next few weeks. And I'm glad she told us about the famous frog legs too. I'm starving. Ugh. What? Man, I'm hungry too. But I'm just going to stick with some steak and pintos. Well, oh, okay then. That's all right. Uh, oh yeah, did you find us a place to bed down for the night? Sure did. They had a vacancy at the Best Western. It's the most luxurious accommodations this side of the Mississippi. And it's right down the street from the town square. And speaking of, Whistle Creek's annual do see do ho down is tonight, right near our hotel. Well, you know, uh, I don't know about all that. Square dance is really not my thing. <laughs> oh, hogwash. I can teach you. It's real simple. See, I got it. I know how to do it. Well, you just do a bunch of crisscross steps, throw in some do -si dos and you're good to go. Well, anytime I've ever tried, it looked a lot like my boots was covered in molasses and my feet were stuck. All you need is a little practice. Now watch me. See? Simple move right there. I don't Simple know. Simple move. Well, you just kind of hold promise, the belt buckle and you kind of you promise out like that. You promise you ain't going to lie? Yeah, I promise. All right, here, 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 here goes. See, I told you, see? And you, yeah, yeah. I can see we got a little work to do, but it's still going to be fun. All right, I'll go to the do -si do hoedown, even if I can't do -si do with the best of them. We'll, we'll, we'll still have us a good old time. Woo-hoo! Come on, let's go eat and get our dancing on. Well, I'm right behind you. Dusty. Trail life was getting pretty rough, but then they remembered God hadn't left them. He never leaves us. That's what we got to remember today. Now, I want to just remind you of a verse that we've been thinking about a little bit. It's Romans 8 28. We know in all things God works for the good of those who love Him. We know, we know in all things God works for the good of those who love Him. When I'm having a bad day, things aren't going my way. I know that God is with me. He's still there and never leaves. We know, we know in all things God works for the good of those who love Him. We know, we know in all things God works for the good of those who love Him. I know that I can love you because you show me the way. Nothing can separate me from your love. You are for us. We know, we know in all things God works for the good of those who love Him. We know, we know in all things God works for the good of those who love Him. You work for our good. You work for our good. You work for our good because you love us. You love us. You work for our good You work for our good You work for our good Because you love us You love us We know, we know in all things God works for the good of those who love Him We know, we know in all things God works for the good of those who love Him 
know, we know it all things. God works for the good of those who love Him. We know, we know it all things. God works for the good of those who love Him. It's Romans eight twenty eight. It says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Now, we've talked a lot about how you guys are trying to figure out your purpose and God's purpose for you. And so, but remember, during that, God's trying to make things good, okay? He never leaves us, even though sometimes life's kind of hard. Every now and then, God is always there, okay? So, I hope that you have enjoyed today's lesson, and I hope you'll join us next week. And don't forget, October 1st is Bring Your Bible to School Day. Great time to have some conversations with some friends about God at school uh, while you have your Bible there with you. Hope you remember to bring it. See y'all next week on the trail.